Hey everyone, my name is Ashan and I welcome you all to this session. In this session, we will be talking about the differences between Git and GitHub. So before we begin, let's have a look at all the topics we will be covering today. We will begin with learning the basics of Git. Then we will check what is GitHub followed by different commands that we use in Git. Then we will see a hands-on demo of implementing all those commands in Git. There, we will also see the process of pushing the file onto the GitHub. Finally, we shall see the difference between Git and GitHub. So without any further ado, let's get started with what is Git. Git is the most commonly used version control system that helps in tracking changes made to the files. We may have a record of all the changes that have been made in a file and we can also revert back to a specific version. Git simplifies the process of software development with the help of easy source code management. Before we go on further with Git, let's first see what is meant by version control system. Version control system, as the name suggests, keep a track of all the versions of a file. This helps all the team members to be on the same page and collaborate with each other. Now, let's continue with Git. Git is not only helpful and popular among developers, but also helps non-technical people to keep a track of all the files they have been working on. Git helps in the process of collaboration and permits changes made by multiple people to all be merged into a single source. Then Git automatically merges the changes so two people or different sources can even work on different parts of the same file and later merge those changes without losing each other's work. This is especially useful when the projects are really big and many people are involved in it. Now. After Git, let's have a look at what is GitHub. GitHub is a service hosted on the web where all the projects are stored. Every project on GitHub has its own repository and its unique URL. Git provides a graphical interface to store the files and helps team members to coordinate on the project from anywhere. GitHub provides several access controls and collaboration features like wikis and basic task management tools for every project. Now when we are all aware of Git and GitHub, let's have a look at some prominent commands used in Git. First command is the git config command. This command helps in configuring values on a global or local project level. It helps in configuring the username and the email address when we first begin with Git. Second command is the git add command. It is used for adding any number of files to the Git repository. It could be one file, two file or an entire folder. All of them could be added to the repository using this command. Then we have a git diff command, which helps in finding and viewing changes made to the file between the commits. Fourth command is the git init command. It is used to initialize a repository. Whenever we run this command, a folder by name .git gets created in the repository. And from that time, .git will start tracking any changes made to that folder. It also creates a new repository and a branch, and that branch is created by default and is called the master branch. Fifth command is the git commit command. This helps in committing all the work we have done in terms of files we have changed or added. Everything will be committed with a single command. Next command is the git reset command. This command helps in undoing the local changes made to the state of a git repo. Moving forth, we have the git merge command. This command helps in joining two or more development histories or branches together into an active branch. Then we have the git status command. This command helps in having the status of all the files, the files that got deleted or created or got modified. The status of all such files can be obtained with the help of git status command. Ninth command is the git push command. This command is used to push the contents from the local repository to the server. Last in the 10th command we will see is the git pull command. This command is used to fetch and download the content from the remote repository and update them to the local repository. Now, after we know the commands, it's time to see the implementation of these commands. Let us start the demo. So we will begin with opening our git bash. Then in the git bash, the first thing that we will do is to configure the username and the email ID. So for that, I will type git config global user.name simply learn at underscore git hub. Then I'll configure the email ID. In this I'll write global user dot email. For this 
I don't need double quotes. The email ID that we are using is Siddham dot Bharat at simply learn dot net. Now we can see in the configuration list whether these things are there or not. So for that we will check. We can see our username and user email are present here. So moving on to the next step, we will check the address of the remote directory. For that, we will type pwd. We can see the location of the remote directory is c users rahul.arun. Now here we can see the location of the remote directory. Moving forth, we will create a folder in this directory from where we will create all our git repositories. So for creating the folder, I will type make directory. Let's create it with the name git underscore hub. Now let's navigate to this folder. We can see the location of the folder. So we will go here. Here we can check our folder is there github. When we go inside it, we can see the folder is empty. So let's create a repository for this folder as well. So we will create this repository with the name comparison. Now let's navigate to this folder. Now we can see a folder with the name comparison is here. When we go inside it, we can see the folder is empty. This is the folder that we will be using as a base for all our repositories. Now let's initialize a repository for this folder. For initializing, we will use git init command. Here we can see an empty git repository has been initialized to our folder. Now let's go back to that folder and check. Now when I enable the hidden files, I can see a .git folder appears on the screen. This .git folder is created. If we get into the folder, we can see a bunch of files are there. We can see directories and configurations. Make sure you don't make any changes to any of the directory. Now we can see something called the master appears on the screen. Whenever a git repository is created for the first time, it creates a branch. The name of the branch by default is the master. And that is why we see this master on the screen. Now let's create a few files for a folder. We will use the touch command for this. Let's say touch alpha dot txt notepad alpha txt we can see a notepad appears on the screen in this we shall write alpha beta gamma we will save it and close it now let's check the status of these files now it shows that no file is yet committed and there are untracked files that could be seen in red here we can see alpha txt is untracked now we can either specify the name of the file or simply write git add dot. Now to add this file, we can give a particular name or we can simply write git add space dot. Then let's check the status once again. We can see there are no commits yet and the files that were earlier read have now become green. It also shows a remove command in case we want to unstage or undo the changes. Now we can go on and commit this file for commit. We will type git commit hyphen m and let's say we type beta gamma. We can see one file changed and one insertion made. Moving forward, let's check the log of all our files. We will type git log. It shows the commit ID. There's the author name, the email ID used, the date and the commit message is also there on the screen. Let's make one more commit. We will do the same process again. We will type touch beta.txt notepad beta.txt another notepad with the name beta opens on the screen. In this again we shall type alpha, beta, gamma and let's write delta also this time. We will save it and close it. Let's now check the status of this file. We can see there's one untracked file that is beta.txt. So we will first add this file. Then we shall commit it. Let's type alpha gamma this time. We can see one file changed and one insertion made. Now let's check the log again. We can see the commit IDs for two files now. 
So now, when we have all the changes and the files with us, we may want to share these files with someone else. And this is when GitHub comes into picture. So when we want to push these files from our local repository to our remote repository or from our system to our GitHub, we will need to use the git push command. So now I will go to my GitHub. I have my GitHub account logged in. I will create the repository with the name comparison. The description is optional. So leaving it for now, we will simply create the repository. Now we will copy this git remote add origin URL, go back to our git bash, paste it here and press enter. Now we will type git remote hyphen V. Now we will type git push hyphen U origin master. We can see the GitHub login opens on the screen. We will put our username and password here. So I will put. Now, as we can see, all the things that we wanted have been pushed onto our remote server. So let's go back to GitHub and check. When we come back to our Git server, now when we come back to our GitHub, we shall see alpha.txt and beta.txt are present on the server. Let's open this. We can see in alpha, we have alpha, beta, gamma. Then let's open beta. Here we can see we have alpha, beta, gamma and delta. These are the notepads that we just created and they have been pushed from our system to our GitHub. I hope you guys understood the demo as it is going to play a major role when we discuss the differences between Git and GitHub. Finally, let's see the differences between Git and GitHub. Git is a software that can be installed directly onto our systems. Whereas GitHub, as we saw in the demo, is hosted on the cloud. Then Git can be used offline. We don't typically need an internet connection unless we need to access the GitHub. Whereas GitHub can only be operated when we have an internet connection. Next difference is Git is something independent and can be used without GitHub. Whereas GitHub has nothing to do unless we make repositories in Git, which means it cannot be used without Git. Then Git is a version control system that helps in source code management. Whereas GitHub provides centralized hosting of the code on the cloud. Next difference is Git does not work according to a graphical user interface, while GitHub is a simple graphical interface. Next difference is Git is a command line. So it operates on several commands like commit, merge, push, pull, etc. Whereas GitHub is a web based service. So it has nothing to do with command line. Then Git is released under the GNU general public license, which is an open source license. It ensures that the software is free for all its users. Whereas in the case of GitHub, there are two tires a free tire and a paid tire. In the end, let's have a look at the competitors of the two. As a competition, Git has Mercurial, Supervision, IBM, Rational Team Concert and Clearcase. While for GitHub, the competition is Bitbucket and GitLab. And with this, we have come to the end of this session. By now, we know the basics of Git and GitHub. We also know some useful commands in Git and what are they used for. We will see much more in the forthcoming videos. I hope you guys found it informative and helpful. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.